Hello, noblest of noble ones. Welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. I would like to start by saying Happy Easter to you all. But now, come, sit, for the debunking shall begin. Alright, so the channel I'm going to respond to today is called They Will Kill You. Now, interesting choice of name, but who am I to talk? The first thing I'd like to say to the guys on this channel is that, first off, I come in peace. But I'm still gonna destroy your video. Why? Well, because the video was, let me just read the um, title to you. It's called Lethal Ninja Weapons You'll Never Want to Encounter. And yes, it's about ninja. And to be honest, if I had to just choose, with all due respect, of course, if I just had to choose one sentence to exemplify what is going on with this video, I would use a Latin sentence. A falsi principis proficisci. They get forth from false principles. The, the whole video is based on popular misconceptions that I think most of you who have been following my channel uh, already know are, are wrong. But this, this video seems to be taking all of its historical information from either video games or anime. But let me get to it very quickly. I don't want to be, because you know I'm rather talkative, so I'd like to get to the point immediately. Let's start debunking the video. Here is the beginning. Ninjas, highly trained martial arts practitioners known for their skills in espionage, infiltrations, and assassination. Here we look at some of the most lethal weapons used by feudal Japan's deadly assassins. As stealthy assassins, ninjas could not avoid using poison. Alright, so the presenter has got a cool voice. I gotta give him that. But, ninjas, assassins. No, ninjas were not professional assassins at all. So what was a ninja? A ninja was a professional spy. He could be commando, he could be propaganda agents. In Edo period, they become night patrols, taking care of criminal um, capture, many things, but they were not professional assassins. Does that mean that a ninja would never perform an assassination? No, some ninjas were called to perform assassinations, of course, but assassination meaning political murder. So something that they might be called to do, but not something that they were... A ninja is not someone who has been trained his entire life to perform uh, assassinations. Absolutely not. Ninja were the intelligence of feudal Japan. Number six, Ninjato. Many people know of the katana, the traditional Japanese sword used by samurais during ancient and feudal times. But ninjas also have their own version of the katana, known as ninjato. Ah, the ninjato. Uh, first of all, ninjato, not ninjato. Ninjato. Um, no. So basically you say the ninja had their own version of the katana. Absolutely not. I, even if you read through thousands and thousands of ninja literature, original manuscripts, manuals, scrolls, you will find no mention whatsoever of the ninja to, and no mention whatsoever of a specifically, of a sword specifically designed for the ninja. It just isn't there. There's no historical proof whatsoever. Ninjato is an invention. Compared to the swords carried by the samurai, ninjato were smaller in size and more compact in form. The overall length is usually less than 60 centimeters and is relatively thick and straight with no curves. The swords were either forged by ninjas on their own from slabs of steel or were regular long katanas that were cut and sharpened so they would end up in the right form and shape. To be honest, I don't wish to sound too critical here, too cynical, but no matter how much you cut as, as a curved sword, it won't get straight because of it, unless you really cut it to the almost to the hilt, because the curvature begins really early in the curvature, if you're talking about a katana. The swords could also be used somewhat like a ladder, where ninjas would stab them into cliffs or walls, step on them, and retrieve them with the strap attached to the hilt. Ninja would stab their swords into cliffs and walls. What? Well, first off, what were the walls made of? Pizza dough? 
But even if you could do that, if it's a stone wall, you're gonna, you're never gonna manage to get your sword through it. Well, of course, a katana could cut space and time, couldn't it? But even if you managed, um, you would definitely damage the sword, and then stepping on it, which would probably bend it, uh, considering that, uh, considering the soft spine Japanese swords have, absolutely not. Number one, shuriken. You definitely can't talk about ninjas without mentioning shurikens. Shuriken. No, again, um, the way they say it, it's actually absolutely wrong. It's completely off. After I heard the one about shuriken, it became abundantly clear to me that they have no clue what they are talking about. Because a shuriken, there is no connection to the ninja. There is only mention of a shuriken in one manual, for as far as I know. Um, but it has to do with night patrolling, so again, Edo period. And as a matter of fact, the shuriken is either uh, early Edo period or late Sengoku Jidai, Sengoku period invention. Before that, there were no shuriken that we know of. And again, in all ninja literature, in everywhere they talk about ninja, nobody mentions shuriken. Shuriken, however, are definitely mentioned in samurai training. In fact, if you have a look at some Kenjutsu styles, for example, Katori Shintoryu, within Katori Shintoryu, you have um, Shuriken Jutsu, and it's not the only one. There are other styles where you can find, again, Shuriken Jutsu. So, sh no, it, it, it's not like it, you can't talk about the ninja if you don't mention Shuriken. Absolutely not. Um, shuriken are a samurai thing, and who knows, maybe maybe some ninja use them, considering that many ninja samurai, so let's clear that one, clear that one up quickly. This myth, all ninjas were farmers, absolutely not. Many samurai were ninja. In fact, in this video, they often show this cliche of a ninja all with his mask, which we know didn't exist, most likely, or if it did, it might have been something that they did again in the, in the Edo period, because in Edo period was common wearing masks. Sengoku Jidai, Muromachi Jidai ninja definitely did not have a mask, um, and then again you've got the, the full masked ninja against the samurai, because of course they are enemies, aren't they? And I've read someone in the comments of their videos saying that. And now, of course, Samurai and Ninja were, were enemies. No, they were not. Samurai and Ninja, uh, particularly if they belonged to the same clan, would be allies. And many Ninja were Samurai. Many, definitely there were other Ninja who were not part of the Samurai class, but we know nothing of them because there is no record. The only record we have, it shows, talks about those Ninja who were also Samurai. So basically, their social status was samurai, but their job was being a ninja. Being a ninja is not a social status. Being a samurai is a social status. They're two different things that can perfectly interlock. Shurikens might be small, but are essential tools in a ninja's arsenal. They often serve a secondary role as a nuisance or distraction when facing an enemy. Mr. Gingetsu Ito, I think, is one of the first who started talking about the ninja deeply, who started to bring up, uh, it, to bring his interest to the people uh, of this concept of ninja in 1910. Again, in all the books he has written, no mentions of the shuriken. The connection between the ninja and the shuriken is a mid 20th century, so it's like 1950s and that sort of thing. Uh, invention, it's something that was made up through theater, through Hollywood, through anime, etc. No historical mention of that. And the one mention I did say comes from a later manual. We are already in Edo period, and I will discuss this a little bit more further, but in Edo period, what the ninja had to do actually changed. Their job sort of changed and became more night patrol rather than actual spies and intelligence. Imagine brass knuckles, but with forward-facing iron nails like bear claws. That's the Teko Kagi, a ninja weapon that has a close resemblance to the X-Man Wolverine's protruding adamantium claws. The origin of the weapon was a rather peaceful one, as a tool for farmers to reap weeds. But in the hands of a skilled ninja, the Teko Kagi becomes a lethal weapon. Teko Kagi, yes, this one is possible, and yes, those are farming tools. Uh, originally, it says here to cut weeds, maybe even to grab straw. There are other many possible usages of of these sort of claws. Um, so it is possible that some ninja use them, absolutely. But let me make it clear: they are not ninja tools. It's 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 a very important line. This one here. 
what is a ninja tool? The ninja tool is something that is used by the ninja class exclusively and that was made for them. Uh, the, these sort of tools are originally farming tools and then they become again criminal capture tools and many of these tools that we see assigned to that many people connected to the ninja are because of these patrol jobs and night patrols that they that they would have in Edo period so they would be using a tool used by some people who were dealing with night patrol but it's not a ninja tool per se Nikote. If you think the Tekokagi was scary enough, then you should take a look at the Nekote. It is also a claw-like weapon, but worn like a glove, and with the blades protruding directly from the ends of the fingers, much like a cat's claws. And that's exactly what Nekote means in Japanese, cat claws. Nekote. Uh, wrong translation, absolutely not. Neko means cat, te means hand. Cat hand. And that's exactly what Nekote means in Japanese, cat claws. Cat hand. That's the right translation. My references, yes, I have a university degree in Japanese. I've lived in Japan for four years. My subscribers already know the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm sure that this this video, since it will be tagged next to the original video, which of course I will leave a description a link in the description below, might get new people. And so people who don't know, they might say, well, how, how do I know that you know what you're talking about? I know what I'm talking about. I'm a teacher of Japanese. That's my job. The Nekote was favored by the Kunoichi, with the eyes and throat as favored slashing targets for these female ninjas. Uh, excuse me, where is the evidence for that? Never heard it, never seen it. Sai, the weapon familiar to those in the West as the weapon of choice for Raphael from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the female assassin Electra from Marvel. Traditionally used on the islands of Okinawa, the Sai is useful as both an offensive and defensive weapon. The weapon has a very distinctive look, as a long pointed metal baton with two curved prongs projecting from the sides. Sai users practice a variety of fighting styles, which involve strikes, blocks, parries, and capturing an opponent's weapon between the weapon's shaft and curved side prongs. Rather than slashes, the Sai is more effective in delivering short jabs into vital areas. The weapons are much lighter than swords, relatively easy to handle, and are typically carried in pairs, one for each hand. The Sai. Did some ninja use them? Possibly. But they again, not a ninja weapon. They are a tool which, which became a weapon in the hands of Okinawa Kobudo practitioners. But you have to understand that Okinawa Kobudo was developed with the concept that most people in Okinawa were not allowed to wield swords, like katana, okay? And so they had to, improv to, to use improvised weapons and make them into weapons, but, but leave them with the original shape so that they wouldn't look like the tonfa, for example, and many others. Sometimes they even use like a piece of, of paper as a weapon. It's very interesting, Okinawa Kobudo. Um, but that's the, that's the preface to it. But the ninja, particularly mainland Japan, you have to consider that uh, unless some specific times where people were uh, forced not to carry weapons, but there have been big chunks of history where everyone could wear um, a sword. Uh, samurai were the only ones allowed to wear two swords, but a lot of people could own a sword and wear it. So at the end of the day, if you're a ninja, um, you can wear... Uh, if you're a samurai class, you can wear whatever you want. But if, if you're a ninja who's not samurai class, most of the times you can still wear your weapons. And if you dress in, a, in normal clothing, and of course you don't have a ninja only weapon um, then absolutely no problem nobody's gonna think and you don't actually need to use that sort of situation that sort of improvised weapons which instead the people in Okinawa had to it's a completely different political setting as if a sharp sickle and a heavy iron weight were both not dangerous enough as separate weapons, the Japanese decided to combine those two with the metal chain, giving birth to the Kusari Gama. The deadly chain sickle weapon was developed during the Muromachi era and has its own unique art of handling, known as Kusari Gama Jutsu. Ninjas would later come to adopt the weapon as part of their deadly arsenal. The hybrid weapon complements a specific type of fighting, usually for use against an opponent bearing a long weapon such as a sword or spear. Kusarigama, interesting one. Um, again, no connection to the ninja whatsoever. In ninja manuals we read, and in, in general in, if you study history and Japanese history uh, deeply, and you, particularly if you read the original uh, material in, in Japanese, you will find a lot of times the word kama, meaning the actual 
a sickle, if you will. Yes, that one was used by the ninja, um, although most of the times it was not used to attack, it was not used as a weapon, it was used as a breaking, a fence breaking tool, um, because most fences were made of bamboo, and when you needed to go into a place, you needed to break through the fence, for example, uh, during a mission, then you would use, you have several types of kama. You've got serrated ones, standard ones, folding kama, lots of different ones. But the idea of taking a ksari, the chain, and linking to the kama, again, it's something that might happen in Edo Jidai during night patrols, but it was not li linked to the ninja at all. And again, please keep in mind, in Sengoku Jidai, everybody who could afford a sword could have it. Number three, Kunai. The Kunai is a dagger-like weapon, which serves as one of ninja's most basic but multifunctional weapons. Historically, it is believed to have been derived from hand trowels, as farmers and masons of feudal Japan used to make weapons out of any spare tools they could get their hands on. Kunais are crafted from metal into sharp blades with balance and weight in mind, as they are used both in close combat and thrown from a distance. Apart from combat, they are used for digging and gouging holes in the wall for spying. Last but not least, uh, the kunai, the kunai, yes, the kunai are ninja tools, yes, they were used, yes, there is historical mention of them, but no, they were not throwing knives. A kunai is basically a triangular um, 40 centimeters long piece of iron, which was used for two purposes mostly. It was a tool, so you could use it, you would normally use it with two hands to uh, dig, for example, or other times you can use it, for example, if you wanna, uh, if you use four of them, you can stick them in the, in the ground and actually use them to pull cords uh, so that you can, you can uh, cross a river, for example, or something like that. All right, so after that, I think they go on talking about poison as well, which yes, m maybe it was used, could be. Um, you know, when I don't have uh, actually uh, historical evidence to support the points, I'm not actually gonna draw them. So at the end of the day, I think I have already debunked what needed to be debunked on this video. Of course, if you do have questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. And again, um, I don't know anything about you guys at They Will Kill You. Um, channel, maybe you're fantastic people, but just let me tell you that this video, um, you know, it's it's not a matter of just making a couple of mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, but this video is completely wrong in its preface. preface. So, um, I don't know, you've got a lot more exposure than I have. Um, I'm not saying link, to, link your video to mine, I'm, although I tried to come to you respectfully, uh, but of course, uh, because again, maybe you do have a lot of good content in your channel, unfortunately, this is pretty much the only video I've seen, but I will check out other of your videos. Uh, still, um, I, if I were you, I would make a video where I uh, correct, or at least write something in the description of the video to say that, you know, to correct the parts that are not historical. You don't have to believe me, you can ask anyone who knows or has studied through Japanese history, will be able to, to validate the points I'm drawing here mostly for the sake of not uh, sharing misinformation. As a content creator myself, I understand how much, you get, how much time and how much um, sacrifice uh, you, you need to make a video, so I'm not saying take the video down, but at least make sure you don't misinform people. I think that would be a very important thing to do, indeed. All right, number ones, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. I will see you tomorrow again for my next daily upload. I hope you have a lovely Easter today with your family and friends. Have fun, study history, play video games, do what you like doing. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye and go in peace. <laughs>